Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teachers. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to show you how you can use the Expert Sleepers ES8 and Bitwig in tandem to be able to send chords from your computer to your Euro rack. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. In order to have chords in Bitwig be sent to and then effectively distributed among the available voices on the Euro rack, we need to do a little bit of creative patching. First up, I need to find a way to be able to control the pitch and the gate of all four of these oscillators from within Bitwig. And I think the easiest way to do that is by using the hardware CV instrument. On a new MIDI channel, I'm going to load up an HW CV instrument. Now, this device allows you to interface with your Eurorack by sending control voltages to control pitch and gate. So I need to select two of my eight available outputs of the ES8 to control each one of these oscillators. I'm going to select output 1 to be the pitch out. You can see that as soon as I select it, we get a blue color. And that blue color indicates that we have pitch information being sent out. So I'm going to take the output of that, and I'm going to put that into the volt per octave of the first Platz module. Now I'm going to take the output, as in the audio output of that, and put that into the first available audio input. If we go back over to the CV instrument here, you can see that the audio in now gives us the option to press ESA input 1. And I can now control the pitch, albeit rather poorly. We don't have a nice actual tracking there, so we need to use a rather nifty little feature, which is tune. So as soon as I click this, you'll see Bitwig is going to go through all of the available pitches it can and tune it as correct as possible. I'm going to turn the volume down a bit because it gets rather piercing in a second. Ooh. And you can now see that we have total control of the pitch. Now, I don't want the notes to be ringing out forever, so I'm going to select ESA output 2 to be our gate information. And I could take that and I could put that straight into the level or volume control of the Platz module. And I can now play short notes or long notes. But I want to have a little bit more in Euro rack control over the length of those notes. So instead, I'm going to use that level output to go into a trigger of an envelope generator we have here on the Euro rack and take the output of that to be the volume, uh, the volume envelope. So if we bring the volume back up on that again now, I can play short and long notes. I can bring a long attack in. Fantastic. So we've got our first voice. Now, what I need to do is set up three more voices and set them up in a way that all four of them will be on one MIDI channel so that when I play a chord I have all four of them uh, on the same channel and then we're going to use the instrument selector round robin features to send each of the up to four notes in a chord to different oscillators on the Euro rack. So let's first of all load up another hardware CV instrument and I'm going to deactivate this one for a sec and I'm going to select ESA output 3 and output 4 this time to control our pitch and gate respectively. And we'll choose ESA audio input 2. So let's just quickly set that up. Okay, cool. So we've got the four hardware CV instruments all now set up. And all I need to do is load up an instrument selector where I'm then going to place all four of these devices. Now that we have all of the outputs of the ES8 controlling the pitch and the gate of the four Platz modules, we can of course play all sorts of nice uh, harmonic polyphony. But this also means that we can use things like Easy Keys and Scalar to send rather more interesting MIDI patterns to the modular. So let's load up Easy Keys first and I'm just going to find, let's go for Emotional Ballads, straight 4-4. Four, four. Let's try one of these patterns and see what it sounds like just sending this straight to the Euro rack. Quite interesting. And it's, it's fascinating to think that this is four separate oscillator voices playing harmonically with each other. And this does give us control over individual voices. And 
that's just fantastic because it's not often that you get to control the individual voices in a chord progression over time. So we could now maybe add a bit more interest to it and say give a bit of pitch wobble to all of the oscillators. I've got two stack cables here and I'm going to patch the FM into the next FM and then that FM into that FM which means that I'm just creating a chain link that I can take some form of LFO. I'm going to use the Instruo Oct over here rather fast LFO from there that I'm going to go into a passive attenuator so I can dial down the amount of modulation we're getting and all it takes now is connecting this stack cable to this stack cable and we now have control over all four of them and if I bring this up slightly add a bit more FM on each of these oscillators I can now bring back Wonderful. Really cool. Okay, why don't we try changing the length of some of these notes. I'm thinking what might be quite nice is to use a bit of sample and hold. So let's take one of these other oct outputs and pop that into a, another input on the passive attenuator. And I'm going to put that as our sample in. take one of the outputs, one of the gate outputs going in here, let's pick the first one for example. So we're using the same information that's triggering our first voice to be the trigger in on the sample and hold. And then let's take the output of that sample and hold and feed that into one of these other oscillators, decay length. And because we're going through the attenuator, we can dial in how much we want that to change. So let's bring that up slowly. different voice, one of them which is a bit brighter. We could also use one of the outputs of Oct going in again through a passive attenuator to dial in how much we want. But we can use that to control the overall speed of the LFO itself. So we'll get slightly wobbly on for good measure a bit of reverb in Bitwig. Quite lovely. One other thing we could now do is to use the effects grid to control um, maybe the pitch of individual notes in there. So let's, let's dial back how long some of these notes are. Quite lovely that. Let's load up an effects grid. And we can drop the whole hardware instrument uh, setup we got there into the post effects of the effects grid, which will keep it playing, but now that means that we can use things inside the grid to modulate uh, items inside that post effects. So how about every time we get a note, so if we take this gate in and we attach it to an oscilloscope, we can see that we're getting notes. These are all of the notes that we're getting out of easy keys. I'm just going to make the gate length a little bit shorter so we've got a bit more defined space between them. And I'm going to send the gate input into a chance. So of every gate going through, I want to have a 30% chance that we will, for example, let's use a modulator here, and 
open up this hardware CV instrument. Let's 30% of the time pitch up that first oscillator by 24 semitones. You can see down here that it's not lasting that long. So what we could also do is take a sample and hold and use the same gate output to control the sample and hold. Why don't we take another instance of this, just duplicate it down three more times, and we'll use this on the second device to do the same thing going up 24 semitones. And take the third to do the same. Quite wonderful. Maybe a little bit of delay could come in a bit handy here. Let's try another pattern on easy keys. Try one more pattern here. We could also throw an arpeggiator on before we go into that effects grid. So we can take these rather boring chords and maybe change the mode, remove some of the steps perhaps. Well folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video has been useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and click that little notifications button too if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos. If you'd like to take your support a step further, then please consider becoming a patron too. As always, happy Monday and happy creating.